I've been trying to upgrade my setup for a little while now. I'm now on to the X570 Aces Tough Motherboard. I have a one terabyte Sabrent Gen 4 M.2 SSD. I have 32 gigabytes of 3600 megahertz RAM, but we're at a time where I cannot find Zen 3 processors or any of the NVIDIA 3000 RTX cards. I'm really starting to get the, uh, the itch for an upgrade. Here's the deal. I have a Ryzen 5 1600 AF on the stock cooler. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna overclock the Ryzen 5 1600 AF as high as we can get it without melting it and blowing it up. And we're gonna see how much performance I can get out of that and see how much it really improves my gaming experience. Because with the Ryzen 5 1600 AF and the 1060, it's it's, you know, it's a decent 1080p gaming experience. The stock speeds for the Ryzen 5 1600 AF are 3.2 gigahertz base clock with a boost clock of 3.6 gigahertz. So we'll find out if we hit the silicon lottery. You know, some people I saw, you know, have some really good results, like four gigahertz at like 1.25 volts, 1.3 volts. Um, you know, if I can get anything above 3.6 all core, I'll be happy. And, you know, let's not start my house on fire. Let's go. So to begin, I'm gonna do this in Ryzen Master because I only have the stock cooler and I'm not gonna keep this overclock until I get an AIO or like a tower air cooler. So we're going to run a Cinebench test at the stock 3.2 gigahertz settings and set it to auto and see what we score. So that way we know how much we improve once we overclock it and then we rerun Cinebench again. So the score of 6,218 compared to the Intel i7 7700K of 6,300, so it scored 80 points less than that processor, which is absolutely insane performance. This is the, the, the stock settings of an $85 Ryzen 5 1600 AF. So now we're going to head into Ryzen Master and we're going to try to find a good stable overclock and then we'll run Cinebench, we'll run uh, Prime95 to make sure it's good and then we'll start testing some games. And it died. So, fortunately my motherboard does not have a clear CMOS button, so this is how I do it. When this happens when you're attempting an overclock, my battery is right here. This motherboard doesn't have a button, so I have to pull that out, let it sit, let it drain the capacitors and whatnot, a couple minutes, and then put it back in. And then it will boot into stock settings, and you gotta make sure you go back into your BIOS because it'll, it'll clear everything out and reset your RAM overclock. And I'll have my DOCP or XMP for Intel, and I set that to 3200 megahertz for my RAM. Then I'll go back in and we'll go back to the Ryzen Master and we'll repeat the process and see what we can finally end up on. So I think I got something that's gonna work here. We're at 3.7 gigahertz at 1.325 voltage. And you know, that's, that's not the Silicon Lottery. Kind of what I was looking at before of some other people's overclock results, they were able to get like four gigahertz at 1.325, so we'll see. We're gonna run the Cinebench test again and see what we can get. Seven thousand two hundred and thirty-five. Wow. So before I think we were at about 6,200, right? We were about 80 below the i7 7700K, which is 6,300. Now we are beating that by 900 with a score of 7,235. So big difference. You know, we might not see a ton of frames in gaming, but for rendering and content creation and stuff like that and streaming, this is a huge improvement in performance. So let's run it to Prime 95 and it survives that onto some games.
The overall consensus is that it gave a big boost when it comes to productivity, video editing, rendering, and stuff like that, where it will help me a lot when I'm making these YouTube videos. And in gaming, we looked at maybe like eight to 10 FPS, roughly between the five games that we tested. The stock cooler, we didn't blow it up. We almost did. I think I, I had to reset my BIOS maybe like 10 or 12 times while I was overclocking, it was ridiculous. In Cinebench, we did almost 1,000 points better than our first one, and almost like 800 points better score than the i7-7700K. And this is an $85 processor, absolutely insane. So overall, very happy with how it turned out and uh, it was pretty fun. So I'm gonna be looking forward to do a little more overclocking here in the future. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. We'll see you next time. Peace.